From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, and I hear everything production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to discuss how SaaS companies are leveraging the power of artificial intelligence to not just grow exponentially, but strategically. Joining us is Rob Friedman, who is the head of growth at Zuper, which provides a one-stop shop for effortlessly managing your field sales and service in the most hassle-free manner from anywhere. Zuper enables you to manage customers, schedules, employees, and field workforce, and everything else your business needs in a secure manner. And in addition to providing us with our guest today, Zuper is a sponsor of the MarTech Podcast. And today, Rob and I are going to discuss how growth marketers are leveraging AI. All right, here's the first part of my conversation with Rob Friedman, the head of growth at Zuper. Rob, welcome to the MarTech Podcast. Ben, thanks for having me. Excited to finally get to have this conversation. We've got a lot to cover over the next couple days. Uh, But first and foremost, let me start off by saying thank you, Zuper, and you are a sponsor of the MarTech Podcast. I appreciate your support in helping us produce this content and all of our other shows. And uh, excited to talk to you a little bit about the, got to be the hottest topic this year, maybe this decade. Maybe since the announcement of the iPhone App Store, we haven't seen so much innovation in such a short period of time, and it's all because of two letters that we all know and love these days, AI. So you're a pro at this. Talk to me about how growth marketers are leveraging AI. Yeah, well, first, it's a pleasure to be here and be a sponsor. Myself and the whole team are great fans of the show, so happy to make this happen. AI, it is. It is the one thing that's got everybody's attention. And we are definitely very excited about it here on our team. And as growth marketers, you're always looking for ways to scale. And this is truly disruptive technology. So I've found myself going back and forth about how I feel about where we are in the artificial intelligence landscape. I think we're in the sandwich phase. You give a prompt, you get results, and then you have to revise the result. And so humans are the bread and AI is the meat in the sandwich, meaning that it just doesn't do it for you yet. It is a research tool. It is a content production first draft tool. Talk to me about how you and your team are using AI. What are some of the ways that you've actually got value out of it? Yeah, I mean, you bring up some very good points. It's definitely in this inflection point. It's not quite on autopilot. You definitely need to put a lot of thought into how you construct your input into them to get really good output. You also need to select the right tools for the right job. Right now, there's been a lot of playing with it. There's been a lot of, but it's got a sharp learning curve. Our content writing team uses generative AI for ideation, for keyword research. It's really good for creating bullet points and helping just to gather together ideas, but actually creating something that a human wants to read, not there yet. And right now, because these models have been trained largely on the web, I don't know about you, when I Google something, I still don't necessarily always get what I want on page one. So yeah, the AI can do what I'm doing manually faster, but they're still going to get the same messiness that we encounter when we're searching. It's interesting. You mentioned that it's good at creating content, good for summarizing content, good for digesting large volumes of content and making suggestions. But in terms of the end output of content you would publish, my feeling with the experiments I've run with artificial intelligence The content creation piece, it is taking the average person's content 
and then refactoring it to answer your prompt. If you took all of the humans that have written content on the internet, it is basically the midpoint. It is a C version. By that, I mean the letter grade C. It is a five out of 10 because it's averaging what everyone says. And what I want is give me the best version. What do the smartest people say? Have you found ways to create content or have you and the team found ways to create content by changing your prompts to be either more restrictive or give it guidance in terms of what you want artificial intelligence to say to get better end results when you're creating content? So we've been able to, if you break it down a piece, an article, say, and you're just trying to get it to give you small snippets of output and be very specific and feed it examples of things that you want, you can get some pretty good content. Now, with all this being said, after you're taking your time, putting in these very smaller prompts and piecing together your article, the time it takes to do that, you probably could have just wrote the article. Kind of like I said, we're at that point where it's helpful, but is it that much faster when you need it to instead of get a C, you want that at least an A minus on the exam here. And to get that, it takes a lot more time of, you have to be very specific and really engineer your prompts in a very special way. It's not purely just natural language where it can just guess what you want out of it. One of the things that I did that I saw success with with copywriting using chat GPT or artificial intelligence to be more broad was actually writing responses to emails. Hey, here's an email that I want to respond and it's a little tricky. How do I soften the language and say, email this sponsor back saying we over delivered based on your expectations, but we'll also give you a break to try to maximize for revenue. And I got a wonderful email response and it helped me figure out what I wanted to say without coming off as crass or being reactionary. So I think that email and copywriting maybe are two different things and ChatGPT is good for one and maybe not good for the other. Talk to me about some of the other ways in the creative times that you've used artificial intelligence specifically to drive growth. Creating content's one thing. How do you actually get customers using AI? Yeah, one thing we've noticed it's good at is collecting information for deep personalization of the outreach. So for account-based marketing, we have found it useful to empower our account executives and our BDR team to really personalize a message to hone in on their interests and what their problem and pain points might be so we can address those immediately in our contact and our content that we are sending out to them. And that has proven to move the needle. And we have seen an improvement in conversion in that way. Using AI helps do research on companies and individuals at a much faster pace than you can do manually. So that's one area. And the other area is through data analytics. It can crunch data and get through a data set and help find different correlations and patterns faster than we can doing it manually through Excel and pivot tables. Yeah, I actually did that yesterday. I have a QBR for one of the podcasts that we're creating with the host of the podcast and my client. I went through or I had ChatGPT go through and say, hey, look through this podcast webpage and summarize what are the most common traits of the people that we've had as guests. And it gave me their executives, their leaders. They've had diverse perspectives. They talk about these things. It was really an interesting list. I was like, oh, this is right on. Great. Okay, so you can do ABM, you can do email, you can create content. Talk to me about workflows, automation. Have you done anything in terms of just getting data from point A to point B or consolidating in an automated fashion using artificial intelligence? We've been successful in leveraging some automation with AI, having some complex workflows in our CRM system, helping to better disperse leads amongst our account executives and getting them the leads that they are more likely to be successful with faster. And AI helped us crunch that data and then create some workflows to automate the assignment of leads and accounts. So give me some examples of how that works. Hey, GPT, here's all my customer data, conversion data, and here's the sales reps. Tell me which sales rep is going to be most likely to close this lead. Is that essentially what you're feeding the machine? 
Yeah. So we feed the machine the historical data on the sales reps and what leads they have fielded and which ones they have placed into close one and become customers. Then we feed it data on who we have in our prospect pool through uh, collecting intent data. So who from that pool of high intent markers that we're seeing and then creating that overlay and saying, okay, well, you know, so-and-so should have this set because they have got a 25% close rate higher than anybody else on the team. They should get ones from this industry or this subset versus someone else who might be stronger in another field or another industry. I guess the last question I have for you is there's a bunch of different ways that we've seen chat GPT, artificial intelligence start to be useful. And a lot of it still requires human touch to be public facing. What are the places where you've seen chat GPT, artificial intelligence, BARD, whatever tools you're using, where's it falling down? Where are you like, no, 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 no. This is where humans need to interact. And this is a place where we're not going to see growth using a machine. It needs a personal touch. I mean, one area is fact checking. Now, one thing I have liked recently I've seen in BARD is it'll give you sources of where it came up with its information and you can go and fact check it yourself. I think there's still limitations in accuracy, which I know is obviously limited based on what the AI can access. But additionally, making sure that things are as accurate as possible and creating those brand standards. So every brand's got their look, their feel, their voice, their tone that they need to stick to. Now, I know Jasper's rolled out some tools that let you configure it to make it more brand consistent, but some of the free tools, they certainly don't have that type of adjustment or settings within them. I think helping brands make sure the content that they're getting out of these and the outputs are spot on to how they actually want to be seen in the world also takes a little bit of time and effort. I have to wait here because I'm waiting to see how accurate ChatGPT's description of me is. It used to say that I was the CEO of Sendoso, which I am definitely not. And (laughs) I cannot agree with you more on the fact checking. Even if you get the tone right, the machine hallucinates. The machine doesn't quite understand context and it just wants to give an answer. It doesn't care if it's right or wrong. And we absolutely have to have a human touch when it comes to evaluating our content and making sure that it meets not only our brand's tone, but it is factual, accurate, and what a human would and wants to say. Artificial intelligence is incredibly powerful. I feel like we've talked about it ad nauseum on this podcast this year. Rob, give me one last little tip here. What's the big tool that you're waiting for? What's the last thing that artificial intelligence hasn't done that you're optimistic will be here in the near future? I'm optimistic that we'll see something that's baked into the tools we already are using, baked into the CRMs, baked in natively to some of the project management tools, and that they'll all talk together, that they will share information, share knowledge, and you'll be able to bridge those things all together so you don't have to teach and reteach each individual system how you want things to be done. I couldn't agree with you more, Rob. I think what's going to end up happening is we're not going to be using chat GPT. We're all going to be developing our own large language models. We're going to be training the MarTech podcast GPT to understand how I talk and how I like to have conversations with my guests and what they're likely to say. And that way we can produce content in the tone of the podcast. The more that we're able to collect data and feed it into the machines with a specific subset of information, the more accurate they're going to be with what we want to say. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for listening to my conversation with Rob Friedman, the head of growth at Zuper. Join us again tomorrow when Rob and I continue our conversation talking about how sustainable SaaS growth really looks. If you can't wait until our next episode and you'd like to learn more about Rob, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes. You can contact him on Twitter. His handle is Rob Friedman. That's R-O-B-F-R-E-E-D-M-A-N. Or you could visit his company's website, which is zuper.co, Z-U-P-E-R dot C-O. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com where we have summaries of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you can send us your topic suggestions or your marketing questions, which we'll answer live on our show. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is martechpod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or you can contact me directly. My handle is Ben J. Shap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. 
And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy. Thank you.